So, Moose, you've been buzzing around the casino. Uh, it's a great day here, a That's great awesome. day to be alive. We've got a live studio audience here. And the breaking news this morning is the Aaron Rodgers contract. Before we get into Calvin Ridley being suspended, mm. I bet you Calvin Ridley's happy that Aaron Rodgers signed a $200 million four-year deal. Nobody's talking about Calvin Ridley anymore today no. because of Aaron. And our good friend, Arash Madani, noted uh, Vikings fan, same division as the Packers, Arash putting on Twitter, investing nearly half a billion dollars into a quarterback with one Super Bowl appearance career who has ongoing playoff failures, truly hilarious. <clears throat> so the question, good deal or bad deal? I literally, I, I see these figures and say I don't care anymore. I, I would tend to go with a rash, but I mean, you're a Vikings fan. You have no room to criticize a rash, and you know that. How much are you paying? What are you paying Kirk, Kirk Cousins? Cousins? Yeah. $30 million a year, can't even get him into the playoffs. I think he's speaking with his heart, not his head. But what do you think about this deal? No, I think it's a good deal. It lowers the yeah. cap hit, which allows more flexibility. They still have to figure out what they're going to do with Devontae Adams, who's a free agent. You know, he's ripe for a franchise tag, which they may use on him. But this, uh, you know, opens up a little more money for that. And you get the, the lower cap hit by throwing $153 million up front. You know, so, so Aaron's not going anywhere, you know, just because yeah. he signed. He's not going anywhere now because they've committed the dollars. Um, here's the thing about Aaron and, and watching it from the outside is. Yeah, there's only the one Super Bowl appearance. I get that. Or the which one he won. Super Bowl, which he won. But when you watch him, he's a two-time MVP. Green Bay's always a threat. Just because they stub their toe in the playoffs, they're always a team that you're expecting to win. You don't want to play, right? And they're always going to be there. So just simply by bringing back Aaron Rodgers, Green Bay's probably in the conference championship game. They'll probably be there. You can probably book it. And if they get Devontae Adams back, that'll go a long way. So. No, I think it's worth every penny. One thing I don't think people understand is guys like Arash and I, and I don't put you in this club. Okay. Sometimes we say things for a reaction. <laughs> like, I would just say, as a Viking fan, you have no room to criticize anybody, particularly the Green Bay Packers. Right? Yeah. So I'm just saying, I think, I think Arash is just getting a little emotional with his, his take. Uh, we've got Dakota Prescott, who... We being the Dallas Cowboys, America's team, at least got us into the playoffs. I mean, with all his bonuses and everything, he was over forty million. I think he got more than Mahomes. Right. Um, you asked me my thoughts on Amari Cooper being released on Friday because I never got to it on the show. But he's due to make twenty-two million dollars a year. There's seventeen million over the cap. Somebody's got to go. This is math. That's what I don't like about the off season. Right. We all yeah. just say play the game. Right. Right, but I just think, I, I'm with you, I think the Aaron Rodgers deal is a good one. I would think any Packers fan thinks that it's a good one. Yeah. Well, and there was talk that he had negotiated deals, and when, you know, they say that, that's the agent, right, trying to figure out, okay, well, if he decides to go here, what can we get a deal done? Do you have enough pieces to move? Can you fit him under the salary cap? And then I can go back to Aaron and say, okay, there's a deal that could tentatively be approved with Denver, and Tennessee's got a deal done, and Pittsburgh, these are all teams that would agree to what we've proposed. So what do you want to do, Aaron, right? Um, you know, when you think about that, it's, it's, it's about value, right? Are you bringing in a guy who's worth the money you're going to pay him, and can you bring enough pieces around him to, to put a championship team together? Uh, I'm just checking the text line. The 902 text line is open. 902-518-3033. Pick up the phone and text RP. It'll come right to the Great Eagle Resort and Casino here. I want to hear from you all. And uh, there are some messages that have come in, but none that have tickled my fancy that I would like to read. So I'll continue. Uh, Jeff the Stamps fan writes in and says, Arash sounds jealous. He does sound a little like a jilted lover there, <laughs> right? <laughs> He's not even that good. Exactly. One super pull. <laughs> what a loser. It's like that song, Rockstar. He's got a 12-car garage, but he has only got six cars. <laughs> what a loser. <laughs> um, uh, Randy from the Peg. Rogers, the drama queen. Ex that's why I called him Karen Rogers. But I don't think we can call him that anymore. You did <laughs> just did. Well, but I didn't mean it. Uh. Anyways, as I say, Calvin Ridley, probably the happiest guy in the world that Aaron Rodgers has dominated the news cycle. But this is my 
fourth point of the Quick 6 show topic here. By the way, Lanny McDonald coming up live in hour two right here at Great Eagle Resort and Casino. If you want his autograph, come on down. But we got to get to this. Atlanta Falcons wide receiver Calvin Ridley has been suspended for the entire 2022 season for betting on NFL games last November. The suspension announced by NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell on Monday is for activity that took place while Ridley was away from the team addressing mental health concerns. The NFL says the betting took place during a five-day period in late November 2021. Ridley was placed on the non-football illness list following week eight last season, which ended November 1st. The team released a statement Monday in which it said it cooperated with the league's investigation in the last month. Even before the suspension, Ridley's future with the Falcons was in doubt. He sat out the final two months of the season after he was a last-minute scratch before the team's 1913 loss to Carolina on October 31st. At that time, Calvin Ridley said on his Twitter account, I need to step away from football at this time and focus on my mental well-being, unquote. We do have to spend a minute on this. I know where he placed the bets. It was the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino, which you've seen my Instagram story when I'm down in Florida. It's that guitar-shaped hotel okay. that I put on my... You've seen it. Yes. He was there. And it's kicked off quite a debate here. For one, for those that have admitted to mental health concerns, right here, diagnosed, and have fortunately coping with them and will never overcome them, but beating, winning the war. Yeah. He left the team for mental health concerns and then went and bet on games. Unless he appeals this, which incidentally, he's not appealing it at all. He's like, I did it. You know what I mean? Like you could, right. you could conceivably say, I wasn't in my right mind. I'm sorry. But he's not even doing that. Right. He's, so he's going to be out $11 million this year. Like I said, they've examined his head. They might want to examine it again. Because he's laughing about it. He's laughing about it. Did you see his Twitter? I did. He's, he's like, I'll come back healthy. He said, I'll bet you $1,500 I don't have a gambling problem. So they might want to... <laughs> Check on him again. Right. So where are you? It was <laughs> less than 10 bets. I know. And none of them were on his own team. They had no evidence that it was on the Falcons that he bet. So I'm guessing you have a lot of thoughts. Yeah. I mean, I don't think there's an issue if it's you or I and we're going to place bets. And then, you know, the next year we end up signing in the NFL as a coach or, you know, we're not signing as players. But, you know, if we do, we're not in the NFL. I think when he's taking this mental health break, He's in the NFL. I don't think him gambling and the mental health break are, are, you know, related. Like, if that's how you're dealing with stuff, Pro I mean... Prove that it's not. No, I know. I can't prove that it is or that it isn't. But if yeah. that's how you're... If you're just going out and, and saying, you, to deal with my I'm getting rid of football. And if you're getting rid of football, I'm, yeah, I'm going to go bet on the game like a normal person. I'm going to go to the, on a resort vacation. But the difference is you forget that you're just on a break. You're still... You shouldn't be doing You're this. still an NFL player. You're still contractually tied to the team right so you're still in that circle so it's that inside information the insider trading you shouldn't be betting on the sport you're involved in even if mentally you've separated yourself from that and for this time being you've considered yourself a normal member of society you're not because you haven't retired you're, you're not a free agent right you're still a member of the football team so it is wrong I feel like we could spend two solid hours on this. And quite frankly, when I was uh, in my car this morning driving up to the airport to get my good buddy uh, Bob here, I was listening to Fan 960. They did a couple of segments on this. And I was of this mind because as a certified mental health coach, here's the thing. You can say I'm struggling. That's fine. You're still going to be held accountable for your actions despite the fact you're struggling. Yeah. Right? And in the case of Calvin Ridley, he better have a damn good lawyer unless he's taking his punishment like this and realizes I shouldn't have done it. If I was him, I would say I, wa I, would say I wasn't in my right mind. Can I get a pass? He's not saying that. He's like, I'll sit out and come back healthier next year. Well, I'm a little surprised. In the chat, one of our viewers says, admitting to betting on your sport is wrong. B. Henderson, watching on YouTube, says, I'm sure lots of athletes bet on games but just don't get caught. That's kind of what they're saying. Like, I'm not a better. Never have been. Just don't really enjoy it. I'm cheap. I've said many times, I'd rather spend $2 on a cup of coffee than a spin on the slot machine or whatever. But that's just me. Is this harmless? It's not harmless. Clearly, the NFL, do you think it's too harsh to suspend a guy for an entire year 
when he's suspended for mental health issues. Is it, you get where they're coming from. Yeah. Right? You don't think it's too hard. No, and it's nothing. And honestly, I don't think it has anything to do with mental health issues. It, him being, it's him being still tied to the team. He could have been suspended for something else. But he was off he, for mental health. For sure. But he could have been documented. off. Documented. But he could have been off for drug problems. He could have been off for family issues because maybe he had a relative going through. He could have been Let's off for. Let's say he blew his knee up. It could be any reason he could be off. Can't be betting because he's connected to the team. Right? You can't bet on the sport that you're involved in. It's just, it's, that's. But I wasn't in my right mind. It's as black and white as it gets. This is, this is, uh, you know, the athlete's version of a zero oh. eight. I'm kind of just being devil's No, of course, of here. course. And that's it's good. It develops the, the conversation. And, but it's the same thing. It's black and white. You know, we don't, there's no sympathy here. Well, aren't you just a mean son of a bitch? And especially with, well, betting is becoming such a I hope you thing. never get in trouble. You're not going to be let off the hook. Yeah, but I'll, my situation will be different. <laughs> <laughs> we won't get into that. But... You know, it is gambling because it's coming in and it was such a taboo thing. And now it's trying to be more mainstream and we're regulating this and we need to do it safely and make it very socially acceptable. We can't be doing things like having the players who are playing the games and are talking well, to the coaches and the game plans betting on the, these outcomes. Gambling, a tax on the willing, as they say. Yeah. Right. Mm, Randy from the peg says pro athletes should not be able to bet on their sport. No, they can't. But as Robin, who's watching in the Gateway to the North, says in the chat, just the difference in sports. NFL, you're gone for a year. And MLB, you're gone for life. Plus no Hall of Fame. Very good point there, too. But I think if Calvin Ridley's guilty of anything, it's stupidity. Mm -hmm. As I heard somebody say this morning, and I don't know because I'm not a better. Never have been. But he said, give your brother the tips and let him bet under his name. His yeah. last name's Ridley. There's a lot of guys. Nobody would have ever detected it. Would have been he an bet issue. bet under his name. That's the thing. If you really wanted to bet and have inside information, use somebody else's name. Nobody would know the difference. Is that not a thing? Yeah, well, it wouldn't have been a thing until he went to cash in his winnings. You buy the ticket. You don't put your name on buying a ticket. I don't got to give my name when I buy a lottery ticket or bet on a game. But if he'd given the inside info to his cousin, Phil Ridley, nobody would know. Right. So, so guilty of stupidity more than anything. That too, yes. But I will say this about betting. I was in Las Vegas, and I did win $75. A lot of money to me on a black jack hand. And woo, I got the same the dopamine, dopamine fire. fire. Uh, and the person I was with grabbed me by the shoulder. We're done. And I was gone. So it's the same. So a true story. Or when you get that email from DraftKings the next morning after you won on fantasy football. Mm. Bingo! Right? It, <laughs> Let's double it down, baby. It, right. So I'm very, very on the betting. I'm not against it. Just for me. Or I will bet 2 to $3 through Bet Regal, obviously. But I keep it very, very... I keep a lid on it. Yeah. I should be the spokesperson for responsible gaming. Yes. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching the RP Show on YouTube. And don't forget, we're live daily on YouTube from noon to 2 Eastern. If you like what you see, hit subscribe. And if you like the program, check around for other segments of The Rod Peterson Show here on YouTube.